Hello Battle Bays, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, I am Andrea Siobhan and I'm currently a specialist in the United States Army. I'm gonna try to make this video quick. Hopefully, I am on a timeline once again. I feel like every single time I sit down to film these videos, I'm on a tight schedule because I actually have to leave out in about an hour and a half, if even that, because I'm going out of town. So I'm gonna try to go ahead and speed this process up. Oh, and if you hear a little person over here making noise. That's Amia. She just woke up. Um, and I think she's watching Paw Patrol. Where's that Peppa Pig? Just ignore her. She may start making a little bit of noise, but we'll see. But we're going to go ahead and speed up and go ahead and jump into this video. But as usual, of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget that notification bell so YouTube alerts you when I post new videos oh and please bear with me today my hair is not cooperating i attempted now i'm 100 natural and i attempted to flatten it honestly i was going for i was going for a different look so it's supposed to be more like um like a short look but this part over here is not cooperating with me at all so it's keep like it's keep like coming out like this but it's supposed to be in here like this so just just ignore it just ignore it <laughs> So today I want to talk about self-confidence. I feel like it's one of those topics that aren't talked about enough. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a few of the tips and stuff that I use to rebuild my self-confidence. I feel like when it comes to self-confidence and being confident in yourself, that is something that you have to work on. It's not something that just automatically happens overnight. And I feel like that's one of the issues that people think that you, you're supposed to automatically be self-confident. And sometimes it's not the case for most people, including myself. I'm going to go ahead and get into it. As usual, I have my beautiful notebook here. I write everything down in my notebook. So yeah i'm gonna be either looking at this looking down but just just bear with me okay so one of the things about myself is i like makeup and i like fashion and i like beauty and i just like looking and feeling nice about myself and i didn't realize how much of an issue and i say issue in air quotes because it's not really an issue people just feel that they need to inject themselves into other people's business and make it an issue i go to work and I like to put on my makeup. Of course, I don't go all out like this, of course. But um, I like to put on my makeup. Probably just a nude lip, something like that. Something real nice and natural. But when I go to work, I still find people saying stuff like, why are you wearing that makeup? I've even been told a few times that this isn't a beauty contest and things like that. Hearing those things over and over again, I started thinking like, am I doing something wrong? Am I not doing, like, am I doing too much? Like, what, what in the world is this? And then I realized, I've been like this before the army. I've been a girly girl before the army and I don't expect to change that just because I got into the army. I still like getting my nails done. I still like putting on my makeup. I still like doing my hair and putting on my heels and things like that. But for some strange reason, a lot of people view that as abnormal or I'm doing too much, which is so stupid to me. Recently, I went to a formation and we were told we can wear civilian clothes at this formation and I had on a high turtleneck with long sleeves, some jeans, some heels with like a little black boot on it. Full face of makeup, hair slicked back like I always like it in a bun, and some red lip. I was complimented by a few, but a few more I was asked why I was dressed like that and where I was going. And I was actually told by some people that I was doing too much. <laughs> like, everybody else at this formation is in civilian clothing. You all are wearing what you like to wear, and I'm wearing what I like to wear, but for some strange reason, I have to be doing too much and there was another instance where we're at a barbecue and i wore a a sundress and let me just let me paint a visual my sundress came up it was high neck arms out came all the way down to practically my ankles no opening no nothing it was like white and white and black with stripes um but somehow i was dressed inappropriately going to the barbecue when i thought we were told that we can wear civilian clothes to this little work day or whatever. But because I like to look nice, I'm making you uncomfortable. As if me wanting to wear a full face of makeup to work completely discredit everything that I can do for the army. Or as if me putting on a little bit of mascara is going to stop me from using my M4 when it's time to use my M4. It makes absolutely no sense to me. 
beauty should not come up as a topic for discussion as a problem when it comes to my job because at the end of the day all my work is still getting done everything is still getting done and i'm just bringing this up because it happens it happens and people don't talk about it much for some reason i notice in the army though it's mainly the women who gets down on each other more than the men gets down on the women and i just think that's ridiculous i have an nco who always has an attitude she's not my nco but she is an nco she always has an attitude i don't understand why you can always be so upset and then for you to call other females out on how jacked up like hey this is about to be an air quotation because everything about the topic and mine and other people's business and judging what makes them happy is so stupid to me with this certain individual you wear fake nails you wear fake eyelashes and you be all over the place your patches don't even be on your uniform right but you want to call somebody out and ask them if they know the regulation for having your nails done if you know the regulation for the makeup standard like girl until you correct yourself and you actually look like the standard, you shouldn't say anything to anybody. I heard a quote and it basically says something like, you need to have the same energy looking in the mirror as you do looking out of a window. And a lot of people, they just they just completely skip that altogether and think that you can just judge somebody wholeheartedly, unfiltered whatsoever, and you yourself ain't even 100% together. That's not cool, that's not okay, and I think that's so stupid. This is who I am, and I'm confident in who I am. There is nothing anyone can say about me that's gonna make me feel differently about myself, you know? People try, and of course, of course people are gonna try. People say things, but at the end of the day, everything has already been said. I already had to go through it, and if it wasn't said to me, I probably was saying it about myself, you know. I was the hardest person on myself. I judge myself based off how I was born. Like, things that I would look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, why, why can I be like this? Or why can I look like that? You know, it's it's already been done. And at the end of the day, I I dealt with it. I like everything about myself now, so you really can't tell me anything. I think Cat Williams lied to everybody when he came out with his stand-up and he was saying stuff like the whole self-esteem bit where you can't hurt somebody's self-esteem when in actuality, you can hurt somebody's self-esteem and you can bring down someone's confidence. For example, if you've been in a long-term relationship and you ended up having a baby and for some reason this person that you've been with for all this time starts to nitpick about little things that changed about you. Maybe it's your weight. Maybe it's stretch marks. Maybe you had postpartum alopecia. It's a real thing, okay? I'm sick of people saying it don't exist. But I'm sick and tired of people basically saying that it's not possible because if you go through all of these things and this person that once adored you starts downing everything about you because you changed just a little bit, that's going to hurt yourself. That's going to hurt your self-esteem. That's going to hurt your self-confidence, especially when you go out and about and you're with this person and you're looking at all the people that he like, like, oh yeah, she's skinnier than me. He's probably looking at her right now. Oh, her hair is nice and long and healthy. Mm -hmm. He probably likes that too. You know what I'm saying? It's, you're gonna start to second guess yourself. All through middle school, all through high school, you look differently, you know, you were born different and you know, you're picked and prodded at because of your differences in the way you were born. That's gonna hurt your self esteem. And it's not fun, but there are ways that you can build your self-esteem up. There, there are like once you get to a point where you can understand that you're perfectly, and I know this sounds so corny, but you are perfectly fine the way you are. Like don't let anyone at all tell you that you need to change this or you need to change that. Or when people come up and they make a comment and you're not sure how to take it. For instance, myself, I've when it comes to my weight, I've dealt with each each part of it. When I was in high school, I was always really, really skinny. Like I was 90 something pounds and I could never gain weight. Like I can never gain weight. And I was talked about because I was so skinny. And then after I had my son, I gained a lot of weight. And so I was holding on to a lot of weight. And yeah, I grew a little booty and I had some thighs and stuff like that. At the time, I didn't think I looked bad because I always had been so skinny. I was glad that I was picking up some weight. But then there was girls who was smaller than I am that didn't like me for whatever reason 
would start calling me fat and this and that and sloppy and all this other crazy nonsense. And so, you know, that kind of hurt. And now that I'm probably in the best shape of my life, I lost a little weight, I'm not too skinny, I don't think I'm too big, I like the way I look. You still have people, why are you losing so much weight? Why you look like that? You, what's wrong with you? You know, I still get that. And I still struggle from time to time when I look in the mirror and I'm like, mm, am I too skinny? Cause I, ri I have so many people telling me that I lost weight. I actually had a guy tell me, never dated him, never seen him in real life, just on social media. Oh, you losing too much weight. If you keep losing weight, I'm not gonna like you anymore. As if I'm a give a damn. People need to watch what it is that they say. One thing I feel is when it comes to social media, people forget that they're talking to an actual person. Behind those photos of me, behind these videos, behind my Snapchats and things like that, I am a real person. But that's, that's one of the things that you have to conquer is being able to decipher what, well, not even, I guess, yeah, decipher, you know, what it is that people are actually saying when they have things to say about you, especially when they are, when you feel like they're super negative things. If you are struggling with self-confidence and low self-esteem, my first piece of advice would be to challenge yourself to think in a more positive way. And I mean about yourself, challenge yourself to think in a more positive way when it comes to how you view yourself. If you have a habit of being down on yourself and saying like just all kind of negative stuff about yourself, oh my God, my hair is this, or my lips is this, my butt is this, you know, if you have a habit of doing that, I challenge you to find three good things about yourself for the one bad thing you have to say about yourself. So if you, walk by a mirror and you say something like oh my god my lips are horrible well now you have to find three good things to say about yourself well my nose is really cute or i have really pretty eyes or you know my hair is gorgeous you know you have to have three things to say about yourself would be my first piece of advice and it really does help pointing out the things that you see in yourself helps you understand that your flaws aren't that big of a deal because you have all of these amazing traits and qualities about you if that makes any sense because it don't even have to be all about your outside appearance it can be your your inside maybe you feel because you're super shy you're weird or you're a nerd or something like that because I used to think <laughs> I used to think like that um I used to think because I didn't talk to a lot of people I was probably just you know a nerd you know I, I categorize myself as lame because I didn't talk to a lot of people and that's one of the things that I had to get out and I just had to realize at that time in my life I just wasn't outspoken like I am now I'm still really not that outspoken but I'm more confident in speaking to other people than I was back then so you know my second piece of advice would be to take care of yourself and I mean eating right exercising reading drinking water when you take care of yourself you start to feel better about yourself because you know you're doing the right thing who knows like those skin problems that you have will go away those extra pounds that you're probably self-conscious because you're holding on to you'll be able to get rid of those but all in all doing good for yourself and taking care of yourself it automatically makes you feel better then well for me it automatically made me feel better when i get up and i prepare a healthy meal versus going to burger king and grabbing a burger and even after you do these things like after you work out you feel energized after you eat a good meal you don't feel all sluggish and things like that so taking care of yourself can definitely heighten that self-esteem and self-confidence in other people would notice like the difference the differences that comes from taking care of yourself is going to start to be noticed from the outside as well so taking care of yourself is a big 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 one third you need to relax okay and yes and when i say relax i mean relax however you want to relax you need to do that so if it's taking a hike, going for a swim, relaxing on a couch with a book, relaxing on a couch watching Netflix, whatever it is you like to do, take some time to relax sometimes. Like take your mind off of all the stresses that you're going through at that moment and just try to 
relax. Day to day, especially when you are <laughs> working and going to school, when you're parenting, it can be very stressful. Let's say you don't have a good week or a good day at work or you got yelled at or you got written up. You start to feel down on yourself like, what the hell am I doing wrong? Like, how did, how did I make this mistake? Or why is this not working out? No matter what I do, I feel like this is just not working out. You need to just relax, just calm down, and just take your mind off of all of that. It Trust me. It helps this is a big 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 one for me and it's helped me so much and I still do it to this day and that's setting goals and I'm not talking about setting like huge goals you know I want to own a house with six bedrooms I want to make five million dollars a year you know tiny goals start with little tiny goals like let's say you're on a weight loss journey and your first goal can be I want to lose two pounds or get a pair of pants I want to get back in these pants you know let's say you're in school and you you're not doing so well because I went through this personally I wasn't doing I came from like whoa geez okay I'll be transparent when I first got back into school as an adult going back to college as a single mother and as an adult it's not easy and I want to say my first semester I came I barely passed I my GPA was a 1.6 seven that's horrible and now I'm over I'm like 3.16 or something like that so it started with being really bad and what I did was I was like okay this next semester I need to get at least two C's and maybe two B's you know you start off with little goals and when I you know pass those goals I was just so proud of myself when you have when you set goals it creates a purpose for you you have something to work towards and when you start to hit all of those goals and things that you have set for yourself no matter how little they are it gives you that little boost of confidence i'm literally doing everything that i said i wanted to do you, you see where it's going so when you when you set those little goals when you set them you want to make sure they're leading up to the big goal so let's say you do want to buy a big house it's backwards planning so figure out what it is that you have to do the little things in between now and you having that big house and make little bite-sized goals on what you need to do to get there not only is it going to make the journey getting there easier it's going to make it easier for you to look back and see where you come from especially when you get to those hard times when you're going for a big goal and you're like i i, I feel like i've hit a plateau i'm what you know i i feel like i should have been there already when you hit those little goals you can look back and you can see that i've been able to do all of this stuff already why would i stop now you know so setting goals for me that was one of that was one of the big things another really helpful thing for me and maybe ugh, my hair is driving me crazy one really helpful thing for me was helping people and that's my next piece of advice is help someone story time real quick um what time is it real quick i was walking into Alta and I saw this lady standing outside of Alta and she asked me for some money because she wanted to eat. But I was still in uniform and I was kind of in a rush and I told her I didn't have anything. And the look on her face, she was just so disappointed and I, it just broke my heart, you know. Some, something in her was genuine and I, I stopped myself. I'm like, but maybe when I come back out of the store, I may have something. So I go in, I buy some lipstick, that red lipstick that I love wearing. I come back out and I hand her $20. She gave me the biggest hug I mean, I, and I wasn't expecting it. And then she's like, hey, by any chance, are you going by Walmart? And I say, yeah, did you need a ride to Walmart? And she's like, yes, sweetie, I am so hungry. I just really want to get some food. And I just, you know, <clears throat> it broke my heart. And every time I think about it, especially her and her situation, it, it, it still makes me <clears throat> a little emotional because at the, we, me and my family was, there at one point i feel like when you do help people you need to help wholeheartedly don't have any limits on what you're willing to do for somebody based off what somebody else says because i actually have people telling me that was probably just a crackhead and she probably took that money and went and got drugs and i know she went and got food because i dropped her off at walmart 
and I watched her walk straight to the place where you get like the fries and the chicken from. And the other thing is when you do help people, that whole broadcasting it and you know, wanting likes and attention for it, I don't, I'm, I'm not on that bandwagon whatsoever. And I feel like it's wrong because it's bad enough that people are probably in situations where they are feeling you know, ashamed about the predicaments and things that they're in. But then you have this person that comes up and they're like, yep, mm -hmm, I'm helping this person right here. This person right there can't pay their bills. You know, why would you do that to somebody? They're already humiliated. Just, just help them and move on. And that's what I mean when I say genuinely and wholeheartedly help and don't expect anything in return. When you do that and you see people's genuine appreciation for what you've done, that's going to automatically make you feel better about yourself because at the end of the day, you did something good because it was something that you needed to do and it was the right thing to do. And anybody that do that do the right thing, you feel good about yourself because not a lot of people do that. So next would be take a different mindset to obstacles. And I mean that to say if you're a person that has to blame every person in the world except your actions on the troubles and the shortcomings that you're experiencing, you need to change that out. You need to change everything about it. You're your only problem. So if you understand that everything that you have going on are the results of your actions, of your actions, when you know that you're the issue, you need to figure out what it is that you need to do to change it. So changing your mindset about obstacles and things like that and understanding, okay, yeah, I'm in this predicament, but I need to do something differently. Let's say it is someone else's fault. Like Will Smith said, it may be someone else's fault, but it's your responsibility to fix it. If somebody breaks your heart, yeah, it's their fault that they betrayed you and they weren't loyal to you, but it's your responsibility to make sure that you heal for the next person. If your job lays you off because they just had to pick a few random people to let go, yeah, it's their fault that you're out of a job and it's not fair, but it's your job to make sure you get up and go and find another job to provide for yourself and your family or whatever it is that you needed that job for in the first place. Yeah, it may be somebody else's fault. It's somebody else's fault and we always wanna point blame to someone because we want to hold someone accountable for what it is that has happened to us. We want somebody to pay, but that's not the case because even if they pay, it's still your responsibility to put yourself back in a state where you're functional and you're whole. So at the end of the day, it's the, it all comes down to changing your mindset of the obstacles and things like that that you face. What time is it? The next thing is, and I know this sounds corny, but you have to accept yourself. That way you're not changing up with each group of people that you hang out with. You have to be sure in yourself and know who you are. That way when you are attracting people or you do get friends, they are genuinely with you because of who you are. You can't expect anyone to want to be your friend if you don't even know who you are. How can they be friends with you when they don't really know you? Because they're going to become friends with you being one way. They're going to see you another way. They're going to have to keep getting used to a different person. Nobody has time for that instability, period. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to the people around you. But it's definitely not fair to you. Let's say you are with all these different people. You're going to act one way with them, one way with them. But then when you're by yourself, you're lost. You don't know who you are. It's identity thing. You haven't found your way yet and that's okay. But understand that that's something that you really need to work on if you want to start building long-term meaningful relationships. The last thing would be have a vision board. I use my screenshots as a vision board of like little goals in my Instagram. I use that as a vision board. I like my social medias to reflect positivity for me so when I'm going down my timeline I want to be motivated to do something it would behoove a lot of you to go and do a social media sweep get rid of anything that makes you feel negative or get rid of anything that just puts out a bad vibe or bad message because those are the things that can be detrimental to you recovering and getting back high confidence and self-esteem so 
Alright guys, that was it. That's all I have today. My little rant on, you know, self-confidence and things like that. I hope you found these pieces of advice to be helpful. These are things that I actually use and I actually still do a lot of these things today. It took me a while to become as confident as I am today and I do know for a fact that there's still areas that I have to work in myself so why not you know put out what's working for me that way if someone else needs the information they can use it as well don't forget to like comment and subscribe and don't forget to turn on that notification bell so YouTube alerts you when I make new videos I am done with 15 minutes to spare and I'm positive I'm probably still about to be running late so I'm going to see you guys later and thank you so much for watching for the record I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable right. for the record you ain't trying to grow them stuff for you right. for the record lab on me going all the way, all the way. for the record ain't trying to link no